So as you rightly said, uh, we are a developer. We have almost wins of around two gigawatt, which are in some phases of implementation, largely solar, but some bit of wind also in it. Uh, so the what really attracts a developer like us, and and just to give you a background, two years back we raised five hundred million dollars from Tamasek and EQT, and a uh, lot of platform like us has been able to raise. Uh, capital to invest in renewable sector in India, and if you see right now, the situation is that there is more capital chasing less number of bids. So, uh, so there is no lack of participation from the bidder side. In fact, uh, on an average, if you see last one year, the subscription ratio is almost five to six times. What it means is, for a twelve hundred megawatt typical SECI bid, you will see a participation of more than five gigawatt. Uh, when we started two years back, uh, there were cases where even full participation or a full subscription was not being met. So there was lack of participation. A lot of bids were not even fully subscribed. So from that environment to today, uh, I would say uh, there is a huge improvement uh, in terms of availability of funds, availability of investment in the renewable sector. So this is the one of the Biggest plus about India: the whole story about 500 gigawatt by 2030, the bids being very properly managed, the good quality of standard bidding documents, transparent level of bidding, uh, and that too now central government really becoming the counterparty to every PPA, which is improving the credit worthiness of every PPA. So all that has been very good for India, and and that's why we see. Uh, India getting great tariffs uh, and and but on the negative side, these are all positive things. On the negative side, what is happening is that on ground progress on projects are slow, uh, and there are multiple reasons behind it. Uh, first is the demand creation. So though so many bits are happening, and despite it being a COVID period, still India managed to do 10 gigawatt plus of bidding every year. But there is no demand. Almost like ten to fifteen gigawatt of bids which have been closed are still waiting for PPAs to be signed. Now maybe it is not because there is really lack of demand. It might be because of some way discoms things. Uh, this whole sector they keep waiting for tariffs to come down. They are typically confused whether I should sign at this tariff or should I wait for some more time to let the tariff come down. Sometimes, what is really missing is a long-term planning at the discom end. So it might not be surely a demand-related problem. It might be more of some bit of planning issue at the discom end. But this is one of the biggest challenges that India is facing. If you ask SECI or if you ask NTPC or NSPC, they may keep coming out with more and more bids. But where is the demand? So so that's the first challenge that the whole sector is facing. Then obviously we all know that in India the regulatory issues have always been an issue. Uh, nowadays the biggest issue that is being faced by the industry is GIB. We all know about this subject. Uh, almost twenty-seven uh, thousand square kilometer of area in a very good radiation area in Rajasthan is stuck on account of this issue. All the projects, which in fact eighty to ninety percent of the solar projects in India are in Rajasthan and that too in the GIB impacted area. It being almost eight months because sixteenth April was the date when Supreme Court passed this order, and we are yet to get a resolution of uh, how to proceed on this issue. Whether should we do undergrounding of cables? Whether should we should we should do overhead? So this is. One of the regulatory issues, like that, there are multiple regulatory issues which we in the sector keep facing, and and it needs a quick. The third is that uh, somehow uh, the whole solar sector right now is in stress because of the very high polysilicon prices, and that's why you would have seen in the media also uh, the. The developers like us or other developers, they are asking for extension because neither. They... Yeah. So. Uh, Carry on, sir. Sorry, please. Yeah. Uh, 
so that is the third leg of the problem that there is a stress not only in india across the globe in the value chain the supply value chain on the solar side uh, people had assumed 18 to 20 cents of module prices what they are today getting is somewhere above 28 30 cents so it's not a small difference in the module price which a developer can absorb and still execute the project it's a significant difference and we all are hopeful that it is temporary issue and moment things stabilize in china uh, all this will go off and one good thing on the back of whatever is happening globally we are really feeling more and more confident day by day is that the kick start in the manufacturing sector in solar in india we see that at least 30 to 40 gigawatt of module lines being set up over the next 1 to 2 years maybe a year following that similar kind of uh, manufacturing happening in cells and we all know what kind of participation which happened in the pli scheme in the whole value chain so in 4 years 5 years maybe right from polysilicon to the modules india would be self sufficient and might be a very big market in the solar sector so these are some of the positives and negatives that i can think about in our sector